Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Timely Words of Hope. I am Joseph Douglas. I just want to thank you for joining us today. It's going to be a wonderful word of God that is shared that I have prayed over, and um, I believe that it's going to touch somebody. I just want to give God some glory for everything that he's doing at our church right now here at Hope Apostolic. God is giving us revival. He is sending it in. He is pouring out grace. He is pouring out mercy. He is filling people with the Holy Ghost, and he is getting people baptized in Jesus' name. And I believe that's because we have such a wonderful team here, wonderful pastor, wonderful ministers, and wonderful leaders. I just want to thank them all for this opportunity today. It is just so wonderful to be a part of the church of Jesus Christ, baptized in the name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of tongues. This is the time of the church. Regardless of what's going on in the world, regardless of what it looks like in the economy or politics, this is the church of Jesus Christ, and the church of Jesus Christ is strong, it is mighty, and it is victorious. And I'm just so thankful to be a part of that church, the church of Jesus Christ. We can start today going to a few scriptures. The first set of scriptures that I'm going to go to is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 9. And it says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Then I want to follow that up with Psalm chapter 86 and verse 15. It says, But thou, Lord, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. Today I want to talk about this, the mercy of God. I wonder if we can just pray together right now before I go forward in this lesson. Lord God, I thank you so much for every opportunity, God, to be able to speak thy word under your anointing. Father, I pray, God, that today, Jesus, that I would have a clarity of speech. I pray, God, that your anointing would prevail online, every listener, God, that it would move upon them, that they would respond to your word today, God, that every word I speak, that it would be fitly spoken and spoken as you want me to. Pray, God, that you would lose revelation, lose understanding. I pray, God, that you would give grace. Pray, God, that you would bind every accusing, every condemning, every lying spirit of hell. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We serve a wonderful God. He is a faithful God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That is Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. My, uh, Micah 6, I'm sorry, yeah, Micah 6 says, for our God never changes. He's the same. That's why we are not consumed. God is always the same. So his mercy towards us does not change. As he is never changing, his mercy does not change. God gives mercy to those who need it. God gives mercy to those who seek after it, those who want it. But see, those who receive mercy are those who are striving to live a life that is pleasing. It requires something of us. If we are to take the mercy of God, then it requires us to make the first move. It requires us to make that first move. And that first move is repentance. Repentance is a major part of your walk with God. It's what helps us to stay right. It's that every single day commitment to live above and beyond sin. It is a commitment to live righteous and to live holy, to deny ourselves of things that is contrary to God's will. See, the saints of God are called saints because they are striving not to live the lifestyle of sin. We're striving every day, saints, to be saints. But no saint is perfect. No saint gets to heaven without making a mistake. Everybody stumbles. Everybody falls short of the glory of God, even after that initial conversion. Sometimes the saint of God that God cares so much for makes a mistake. They find themselves in a place where they made a misstep. Maybe they've sinned against God and they know it. In their pursuit of God, they fall. The temptation overtakes them. Sometimes saints may find themselves in a weakened state, in a place where they are not as strong as they usually are. And because of this, that constant hammering of Satan, that constant temptation that is bombarding their mind, bombarding their spirit, and it just seems to be something that they can't get out of the way of. They, they, they give in, they fall, they make a mistake. 
though they know that they should not have given in to this thing, they stumble and they give in. You see, I have been in those very shoes. I have made mistakes. I have made some very poor choices, even after being baptized and being filled with the Holy Ghost, that convicting spirit of the Holy God, of yea, Jesus Christ. However, I'm so thankful that God did not remove his grace from me. God didn't kick me out of the kingdom when I slipped. Even if I made a pretty significant stumble, God didn't throw me away and cast me into the trash and send me back to the world. But God gave me mercy. God gave me grace. God gave me an opportunity to overcome my shortcoming. He gave me the ability to keep moving forward. And that's what God wants to do for everybody that hears me today. God wants to give you grace. God wants to give you mercy. He wants to give you the grace to overcome, the grace to get back up and claim your high places. God wants to pick you up out of the hole that you may have found yourself inside of. He wants you to get out of it, and he wants you to continue to build your walk with him. He wants you to continue to plow. He wants you to continue to hammer. He wants you to continue to fight and grow the kingdom of God. You see, if you're listening to me today, God has called you into the kingdom for such a time as this. Or, yea, he is calling you into the kingdom for such a time as this. Every single person that is listening to me, you are special in God's eyes. And God is not willing to throw you away or, 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 or trash you, if you will, so quickly. I'm so thankful that he values you more. He values me more. And because he values us, he chooses mercy. See, God wants to just forgive you of your mistakes that you've made. He wants you to repent. He wants you to pick up your cross once more and keep moving on. He cares about you too much to let you slide. He cares about you too much to let you backslide, to let you go, to let you wander. See, Jesus is that God. Jesus is that one that, though there be 99 sheep that are doing just fine, when that one sheep begins to make a mistake, he will go to that sheep. He will find the one that finds themselves in a place where they are beginning to walk outside of the will of God. He goes to them, and he reaches for them, and he gives them grace. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Cast your cares upon the Lord, because he, he cares for you. If you've made a mistake today, this week, last week, and you find yourself struggling with shame, cast that upon the Lord because he loves you. He wants to give you mercy. He wants to give you grace. He wants to see you ascend to the holy hill of the Lord because in you is the seed. In you, there's a seed that is planted, and that, that seed that has been planted is going to grow one day into a mighty thing. And he is not so quick to rip that seed out. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16, it says, For a just man falleth, falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. You see, the difference between you and I, the difference between us, if you will, and those who are not seeking the Lord is that when they make a mistake, they just, they just continue to, to live in that mistake. They continue to dig themselves deeper and deeper and deeper. And I even find myself at times viewing and witnessing saints of God dig themselves deeper and deeper and deeper. Maybe because of shame. Maybe because they can't forgive themselves. Maybe because they just don't feel worthy to pick themselves up and keep trying because this thing that they continually struggle with has caused them to fall time and time and time again. But the Bible says that a righteous man falls seven times and gets back up again. It doesn't matter if you have fallen to this thing seven times or 27 times. It's time for you to get back up again and overcome it. God is going to give you the grace that you need to overcome your struggle, but you cannot keep digging. If you're going to overcome, you've got to turn around and start climbing out. You've got to start climbing out of the hole and continue growing. You've got to climb out. Don't keep digging. God doesn't want us to be controlled any longer by guilt, by shame, or by condemnation. Rather, God wants us to use his mercy to get back up and take our rightful place as overcomers, conquerors, and heirs of eternal life. Hallelujah. I can't hear your amen, and I won't be able to see your comments, but I wish you would say amen right now. Praise God. 
See, God would rather someone take a hand of grace and pull themselves out of the hole that they dug themselves into than sit in that hole and spiritually rot. God doesn't want a bunch of spiritually dead people who are refusing to take the grace of God because they're feeling accused, because they feel that they're not worthy of the grace, because they feel like they're not good enough or that they keep failing. See, if God is trying to extend a hand of mercy to you, it's because he sees something in you that obviously you don't see in yourself. So instead of rejecting the mercy, instead of saying, God, I can't take it because I won't ever overcome this, instead of telling God that you know better than him, take the hand of mercy, take the grace, and just watch what God is going to do in your life. There were things that I had found myself struggling with before, and it seemed like it was a season. I just couldn't get past it. But by the grace of God, he gave me the power, he gave me the authority, he gave me the ability to overcome that thing because he is long-suffering. He is patient. You're not the only one struggling, my friend. You're not the only one that has things that he's still or she's still trying to overcome. Great, mighty people are still, they have stories. Great and mighty people have stories of things that it took them time to overcome, but yet God gave them the grace. God God was patient with them. God was tolerant with them and helped them to overcome that thing. And God wants to give you the power. God wants to give you the grace to overcome. See, though you may feel unworthy or undeserving, God wants you to confidently approach him, and he will forgive you. He will give you mercy. He will give you the grace that you need to overcome. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Wonderful verse of Scripture. Take this. Some of you need to take this verse of Scripture and you need to memorize it. You need to write it down on an index card. And you need to memorize it. It it did me well early in my walk with God to memorize this verse of Scripture because I needed it many times. It says in Hebrews 4, 16, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hallelujah. There are times when I need His mercy. There are times when I need His grace because I'm not perfect, because I still got flesh, because I make a mistake, because I fall down for a moment. But His grace helps us. His mercy covers us. I'm so thankful for that. Hallelujah. See, the Bible is full of examples of people that are imperfect. If you actually study out the genealogy of Jesus, every single person in his fleshly on the mother's side in his genealogy is imperfect. Everyone has a story of their failure, but how God's grace covered it. God's grace pulled them forward. God's mercy and grace mixed together created a a genealogy, a lineage of people who are imperfect, but God's grace saw them through. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that his grace is sufficient. I'm so thankful that in my weakness, he is made, his strength is made perfect. I'm so thankful for God. One of the men of the Bible who truly made a misstep, but yet found the grace of God in such a wonderful way was Peter. See, Peter was a man that walked with Jesus. He walked with Jesus every single day. He heard the sermons, the anointed, powerful sermons. He saw the miracles. He saw people that received sight, people that received the ability to hear. He saw people stand up that were paralyzed. He even received special revelations straight from God. But see, when it it came time for him to prove his faithfulness, out of fear, Peter failed the test. Peter made a mistake that may very well have haunted him for quite some time. You see, when Jesus was being persecuted before the crucifixion, Peter wasn't there for him. As a matter of fact, not only was Peter not there for him, but Peter denied Jesus. He didn't just deny him once. He didn't even deny him twice, but three times Peter said, I do not know Jesus. I don't identify with Jesus Christ today. I'm sure that it was the most roughest moments of his life. We're going to go and read there out of my Bible. I'm going to go and read Matthew chapter 26, verse 31 to 35. Matthew 26, verse 31 to 35. Let's go ahead and get this set up. Verse 31, it says, Then saith Jesus unto them, 
All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. I will never be offended. Then Jesus goes on and tells him, Before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times, Peter. Three times you're going to deny me. Verse 69 of that same chapter, Matthew chapter 26. Now Peter sat without in the palace, and the damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus Christ. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. That's the first misstep. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, the second misstep. He denied with an oath. I do not know the man. I swear, I, I don't know him. I really don't know Jesus. Verse 73, And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said unto Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear. He was getting violent at this point. He was saying things that he ought not say, shouldn't come out of a preacher's mouth. He was cursing and swearing. I don't know this Jesus. I don't know him. I'm telling you, I don't know him. And verse 75 is the saddest part of this entire passage. I'm sorry, verse 74 and then 75. I know not the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Immediately. As, G, as, as that prophecy that Jesus gave him, as he fulfilled it by denying Jesus the third time, the rooster crowed. It says in verse 75, And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the rooster crows, thou shalt deny me thrice. And this is what it says. And he went out and wept bitterly. I wonder how many saints of God have found themselves in a place where they are absolutely ashamed because they feel that they have failed the Lord and they wept bitterly. They found, they found themselves in a place where sorrow had overtaken them. I can almost imagine the eternal conflict that Peter struggled with when he heard the rooster crow. I'm sure the guilt, the shame, and the condemnation was overpowering him. Sorrow and the feeling of being a complete failure overtook him. But see, the story doesn't end there, and I'm so thankful that it doesn't end there. But God's grace is just too good. See, his mercy truly endures forever. It endures in the Old Testament, it endures in the New, and endures today in 2023. His grace endures. See, Jesus didn't give up on Peter. He didn't con even consider Peter to be a failure. Neither did he choose to condemn him. But he asked three simple questions to Peter. He said, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me, Peter? And Peter responded, yes. Yes, Lord, I love you. Second time he said, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes. Yes, Lord, I, I love you. Third time, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus simply says at the end, then follow me. See, God is not holding a grudge against you when you make a mistake. When you feel like you have failed him, that's not how God sees it. Though you may have failed and made a mistake, God wants to give you grace. But he just wants to ask, do you love him? Because he loves you. He wants us to follow him. Though you made a mistake, just get back up and continue to follow him. You see, Peter may have very well reached a point where he gave up on himself. He could have very well deemed himself to be a lost cause and a waste of time. But God did not view him that way. The grace of God that was given to Peter allowed him to become a great and a mighty man of God. Need I say that he was the first one to preach a Christian message. He was the leader of the very first revival of 3,000 souls. He preached in many places and won many souls. He changed many lives because God didn't look at Peter and see his, his failures. God looked at Peter and saw a child of God, a bold leader, a man of prayer, and a pillar in the church. 
I'm so thankful that God doesn't look at me and see the failures that I've made. But he looks at me, he looks at you, my friend, and he sees the person that you're going to be if you will just continue pressing. He already has a plan. He's already got the blueprints. Hallelujah. But he wants you to continue forth. Regardless of how you view yourself, just continue reaching for him until that perspective is changed. Because grace and mercy is here to help. See, God is not willing to throw you away as quickly as you are willing to throw yourself away. He loves you, and he's invested. As I said at the beginning, I'm so thankful to be a part of the church of Jesus Christ. You see, God gave me the ability to recognize that I was in sin, and he also granted me repentance. That means that I turned from sin. I chose to no longer live that lifestyle, but now I'm pursuing righteousness. By the grace of God, I'm trying to pursue holiness. I'm in the process of sanctification. Thank you, Jesus. He gave me the opportunity to see clearly in the scriptures that I must be baptized in the name of Jesus. He invested into me some very precious things, and he's invested into you some very precious things. You see, God gave me the Holy Ghost. God filled me with his spirit knowing that I was going to make mistakes. He filled you with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of tongues, knowing that you were going to make mistakes. But your mistakes in your journey of Christ-likeness and sanctification are not enough for him to stop what he's doing in your life. He wants you to get up. He wants you to keep going. Can we read in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6? It says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That means he's trusted in you. He's trusting you with something. He has entrusted you with truth with revelation, with his spirit. He has done things for you because he sees goodness in you. He sees the plans that he has made for you, and he sees the potential that you may not even see in yourself. But if you will just pick yourself up and keep growing, you will see the goodness and the greatness and the glory of God. God doesn't look at you and see a failure. He sees greatness. See, whether you have been at this for 10 weeks or 10 years, God wants you to pick yourself up and walk in his grace. He wants you to get up, my friend. He wants you to get up. Today is a day of refreshing. Today is a day of renewing. Today is the day that you can right yourself because God has given you that opportunity to right yourself. Hallelujah. Today he is extending a hand of mercy. As I go forward and I preach this message, what I have felt to say towards the end of this podcast for those that are listening, is that God is trying to extend a hand of mercy to you today. I may not know what your mistakes are, but God knows. And he also knows that you're listening into this podcast. So if you're listening today, it's because God wanted you to hear this. And he wants you to pick yourself up and keep going forward in God's grace. The Bible is full of examples of people who took the grace of God and used it And God saw, or they saw, God use them in a mighty fashion. You see, it's not just about being used by God, but it's about a relationship. It's about going to the next level in your walk with Him. He wants you to pick yourself up because there are depths that you have not yet been to. There are heights that you have not yet walked or ascended to, but those places He's calling you to. Hallelujah. I wonder if we can pray together right now. Let's just pray right now. Lord God, I pray, Jesus, that you would let your grace and mercy flow into the hearts of every person today who is listening to this podcast. Father, I pray, God, that those that you are trying to give mercy to, that they would forgive themselves. God, that you would bind the voice of, yea, the accuser of the brethren, Satan. God, that you would silence the voice of that spirit in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that today that there would be an opportunity of refreshing. God, I pray for a fresh start. I pray, Lord God, for a new beginning. And yeah, I pray, Lord God, that you would help someone to pick themselves up, God, if they find themselves in this very place, that they may continue forward, no matter how far they have traveled, no matter how long it's been since they have come to you and repented. God, I'm praying that today you would grant them repentance and that today you would give them the mercy and grace that they need to get back up to the place that you have called them to be in the name 
of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you so much, my friends, for joining me on today's podcast. I hope to see you again soon. God bless.